What's up everyone and welcome to the round one back nine here at the first stop of the Disc Golf Pro Tour, the 2022 Las Vegas Challenge. My name is Mitch Phillips. Joining me is Nathan Queen. Talk to me about the front nine, man. Yeah, the front nine, we had lots of birdies, lots of good putts going on. Um, a few park jobs, but mainly the putts were shining through. We've got an attackable back nine here with a couple longer holes. Uh, especially to get started on hole 10. Yeah, and a card like we have today, I mean, checking in with this front nine results, I mean, some hot scores. I mean, Chris Dickerson just one off, one behind Gannon Burr, I believe. And I mean, talking about the distance on the back nine, a card that has distance, that there might not be any further throwers than yeah, these four right yeah. here. Best thing to point out about that, what we saw there is it was all green and gray. There was no red going on. But right here, you see Gannon Burr a couple holes ahead, has a stroke over Chris. Uh, but that brings us straight into hole 10, the second most difficult hole on the course, although it does only average 0.14 over par. Uh, really tough par 3, 381 feet. This heart-shaped bunker in front of the green uh, plays as a hazard, so if you land in it, then you'll be putting for your par. If you go just past the basket, then you have about a circle's edge putt coming back, which is pretty scary. Yeah, and this is the time in your round, kind of, I think, when you're you're halfway through, you're either feeling it or you're not, and you're either going for this or you're laying up. Or, I mean, Chris may be holding on to this one just a little bit long, but this is actually a pretty good miss. He's going to be able to have a pretty stress-free par, um, but kind of takes out the ability to run it with how close that sand is in the back. Yeah, unless you're really feeling it. That's just uh, mm -hmm. that's a par play right there, right. just long instead of short. Albert going more of a flex play, pretty overstable disc, laying out right. Yeah, that seemed to be a layup shot from the uh, front, from out of the hand. You could just tell he wasn't really going for much there, playing for the three. Yeah, just sticking to the game plan on a hole like this, knowing that it's it's some strokes can definitely be picked up. But see if Seppo tries to put this one close. Yeah, he's got a little bit of more speed on this one, and just <laughs> enough speed. To jump up and out of that bunker. Jumps out. Let's get a check in on Seppo's form. Nathan, you want to talk us through that? Yeah, Seppo's got a really clean, a clean, slow walk up and just a lot of power right at the end. You see the solid plant and the pull through from all the same, you know, it's all on that same line. Uh, just very clean, powerful form. Yeah, brings the disc pretty high through his chest too, just keeping everything upright, just being able to not lose any energy leaning over or anything. Garrett going with the overstable driver here. And he gets that distance on that hyzer just about right and is able to get it to curl back up. He'll have himself a birdie putt. Yeah, he's in an attackable position. So Albert going to be looking to hit probably just a few feet short of the pin here. You don't really want to touch any metal. Yep, he does just that. And also, you know, you see some players, you know, on a card here, we didn't see it, but some of them say, you know, hey, it's hazard. I'm going to push it as close as I can to the basket. If we get lucky, great. If not, it's a pretty short putt. Yeah, it's, um, you can play that way. You could get some bad rolls out of this hazard, even though yeah. it is sand. If you get up there and hit that lip, you could end up rolling back and have your par putt from about 38 feet or so. Seppo for birdie just high, but thankfully. Thankfully, <laughs> Albert's disc was there and kept him going. <laughs> a little bit of bocce ball there, just yeah. kicking it out. And great birdie from Garrett. Not many, not many birdies on this hole. Yeah, one of very few. I mean, like we said, coming as the second hardest hole on the day. As Albert is here to tap out his par. And par here, I mean, feels really great. Yeah, it's um it's what you want to get. If mm -hmm. you get a if you get a birdie, it's kind of a bonus, but you definitely don't want to lose a stroke here trying to do something, you know, overachieving. Right. See Chris keep that bogey free streak alive. Let's move into hole 11, par three, 430 feet. This hole is a lot of distance and gets really difficult at the end of it. Um, a couple of different ways to attack here. Uh, the most common is going to be for a right-handed player, a big hyzer out to the right, but there are these guardian trees um, and you know, the sand can, it, it tends to stick a little bit on this hole, but if you do saw it off left, there is that fence um, that does go out of bounds. Um, so it's, it's a long hole. You know, it plays a tiny bit uphill. And for just a few players, uh, maybe including Garrett here, yeah. there is some OB long as well if you push too long. Oh, and, uh, and he hits 
what an incredible tree kick that so he, he just was, got right So he was there. calling that from the tee, asking for it to hit the fence to hit the fence. So we actually thought it did hit the fence, but now knowing it did actually hit that big tree. Yeah, great, great opportunity for a birdie now. Well, if you're calling for it to hit something and, you know, it listens, that's a great spot to be. Chris getting this out a little bit wider, but still kind of on the nervous side if oh. it gets a big skip, and it was going to. Well, I, th I think that was good. Yeah, it was a little bit shorter than you want with that skip play. You kind of want to go just past that, so it kind of has more of a straight skip. And like you said, I think that was maybe a little bit better with how much was coming in on the angle. Let's see if Albert can kind of split those and push a little bit further. He's got this one pretty low to the ground, but it has a nice angle. Oh, it's perfect. And just enough speed to keep on going. Let's get a form check here. Yeah, and Albert, you know, one of, definitely in the taller stature here, you can see he's going to stay straight up all the way through, put that disc out. Great X step, and he's pulling straight through the chest. And even when he's, you know, throwing more of that low skip shot because of the higher stature, he's able to not really change his form too much. So just such a clean form for a taller guy. Seppo looking to match with that kind of skip play here. Yeah, and he's got a nice stand up on this disc. Oh, just catches one of those late trees on the right. That was going to be pretty much parked, I think. He's yep. still pretty close now, but will have to putt instead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, after that really just awkward result, Chris with just a little bit of a stepper. Yeah, that's a nervy putt right there. Mm -hmm. That fence is OB, so you don't want it to lift. I believe he was putting into a bit of a headwind yep. with a right to left going on there. So yeah, and Seppo actually got a pretty favorable kick from the tee. It looked like a kick further right, but he's he's still well, you know, just outside the circle. Going to be walking it off, just making sure everything's right there on the basket. Yeah, sometimes those chains will get stuck. I do that anytime I see it. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, you you want the chains to be where they're supposed to be. Seppo's been really hot from this range so far during this round. Taking a bigger step out here, though. Yeah, it looks like he's got a little bit of branches to deal with up on his right shoulder. But Able no to worries. keep it underneath <laughs> and hits it low left on the basket. A great birdie here on uh, a pretty difficult hole. Yeah. A hole that definitely, I mean, players like Seppo, like Albert, you know, like Garrett, I mean, these, I mean, Chris as well, they have that 400 plus foot just hyzer flip or just pure hyzer uh, yeah. in, their, in their arsenal. And, and Garrett getting back on it there. He's got a couple birdies in a row. And Albert just all the way up here with that low skip shot. Yeah, Albert definitely heating up at the right time. And a lot of these holes that are coming into, like you had said, I mean, very attackable holes as this is the longer stretch of the course. good confident way to continue the back nine here for tom yeah so three birdies here which is uh playing slightly better than the average on the hole uh did average 2.69 so uh not many bogey strokes on the hole yeah people avoiding the ob and that brings us into hole 12 like you're saying part of the longer part of the course 405 feet all of this area is ob that cart path does play as inbounds uh, your best shot's going to be about where the drone's flying at now. You want to get a right-handed backhand hyzer out high enough to drift over to the left and uh, get the sand here just like before in the course. Sometimes you're going to get a skip and some kind, sometimes you're going to get a dig. Uh, so best play is just try to pin it, not have to worry about it. Yeah. It is true. There's like that kind of like in between gravel and sand, the old big skips, but Garrett taking it, I mean, so far over the top, wide right, not really bringing a skip into play as this is just going to dig and almost giving it an ace run. So that is what I meant by pin it, but I had not watched him do that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, great shot from Garrett there. I haven't really seen anybody go over top of yeah, right go, like that. Yeah, to go over knee, over that, uh, that little shrub there, even you see Albert go more the inside line. And this inside line tends to bring in this low ceiling pretty quick, but he catches that cart path oh. and actually goes long. Yeah, he was probably not wanting that cart path no. skip. He was planning for that 
sands dirt over here to kind of slow him down. Yeah, that car path when he's coming in on that angle, not as sharp of one, it pushes him more forward than it did left. Man, that was an incredible shot from Garrett. Yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> still thinking about it sitting here. Zeppo, yeah, just a little bit more of a flex line almost, but it's going to be inside. And, yeah, that low ceiling comes into play. That's that's kind of where those drives land. If you, you're a little bit more tentative about the wind or, it, you know, there is a headwind, it's it's tough to get it to push all the way through so many guardian trees. Yeah, it looked like he may have gotten the nose up just a little bit to yeah. keep it from drifting right. Uh, this has a nice drift on it, but he does catch that no skip instead of the cart path, so he'll end up on a bit on the short side. Yeah, he'll be at circle's edge. It's Seppo with not much else to do with how low those tree limbs are in front of him here. Chris with maybe one limb to deal with if he goes high. He's gotten warm enough so he can match his shoes now. He got to yeah. take those long sleeves off. Uh, just a little bit low on the birdie look, though. We'll see what Albert has after going long. And just low again. Just you know, it, it, the wind is, is switched on him. I feel like he's he's having trouble in the front nine with the uh, the headwind. But then now that we're looking at that tailwind putt. But like you said, I mean, you're not expecting that, and sometimes you walk up to your shot, and it, it's difficult to stay composed after you you thought you were somewhere else. Yeah, it kind of seems like he's just kind of missing the pop from mm -hmm. his fingers whether it's a spin or a push either yeah. one he's kind of having which is usually nerves and mm -hmm. is what comes to mind for me just missing that last pop to get his disc to really move forward yeah i mean like i said this is round one we're only at hole 12 i mean there's so much golf left for albert to really get after it yeah not having a bad round at all PDG Event Support Helpline. Hey, I want to run my first event, but I'm worried I'm a little in over my head. Well, we need new event directors, so I'd be happy to help with anything you need. Can you help me set up my registration page? Absolutely. What about publishing tea times? Couldn't be easier. Do you know anything about investment strategies? It's not really our area of expertise here, but I would personally think long term and diversify. Ooh, I should short Tesla. I mean, I want to short something. Shorting is good, right? To move into hole 13, par three, 249 feet, the second shortest hole on the course, but man, does it come with a lot of difficulty. Not one, not two, but three hazard bunkers here and the green on the right. And this uh, little kind of gully creek behind does play as casual, but it makes the footing really awkward. A lot of different ways to attack this um, as we see the most common here, I feel like we see for the right-handed player, is this skip shot, just trying to go close. Is Garrett, oh, just a little bit short, going to find himself in the bunker. Yeah, 249 feet, you uh, you usually think, okay, distance control shouldn't be too much of a right. problem. But this tree that's right here off of the left mm -hmm. keeps you with a low ceiling, which it makes it very difficult to get up and over these bunkers without forcing it too fast and too far past the basket. Uh, so interesting hole here, kind of like we were talking about earlier, short, uh, but really very technical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this course and a lot of the courses here on the property do that well, where you can think it's a ball golf course, we're just going to throw these bombers. But I mean, you uh, immediately after throwing 430 foot par threes, you walk up to one that's nearly half the distance. A step goes for the kind of higher route here with chain height with the mid range. And that is just incredible touch. You don't really see many people try that on this hole. Uh, without blowing past it and being 40 foot long. He was able to control that mid-range, get it to fade and, and have an inside the circle putt without using a skip. Yeah, it's just such a different way of approaching the game as we see more and more European players come over. It's that, that touch mid-range, that you know going to the standstill when you can, as Chris looks like he's put it so well. Just again, just that little bit long, like you said, you find that skip, but definitely correcting off the card mates to put it close. That's a scary putt here. And able to connect on it doesn't show any nerves came out clean just like usual trying to get the card started for a bunch of birdies and albert moving some boulders around getting that footing right and again this He's just been in this just just outside circle range pretty consistently. Oh, 
getting and, it going though yeah that putt had a little bit of that pop at yep. the end of it you could tell as soon as it came out of his hand it was just moving a little faster had enough spin on it to get there instead of drop out Seppo continues with the streak here yeah, for the birdie. I mean, like you said, such a unique way to approach this one with so many people going to a skip shot or, you know, not even messing with it, but to go air shot the entire way with a mid range is wow. Extra points for you, Seppo. Yes. <laughs> Garrett putting for his par here from the hazard. Yeah, and a good par save there. That's a. You've just watched all the competitors on your car take the birdie on this short hole that you feel you should take the birdie on. That's a great way to collect yourself and get the par there. Now that you've had your little short shot, we're going back to that 405 feet. This does play uphill probably closer to the 450 area, I would say. Yeah, pretty close to that. Uh, hanging out to the right, and uh, the wind is usually going to help you out a little bit pushing back to the left. Uh, but pretty easy to stand it up too straight trying to get enough power on this shot Yeah, and if you do stand it up too straight, you know This, this comes closer to actually hole two's fairly where there is that spectator path across So if you push too far, there is a new out of bounds, but it doesn't come into play too much Like you said, it does play so far um, But the mistake here is actually going to be to short it and there's a lot of trees that block you without a clean putt But as we know Albert has all the power he needs Using the ground like he has the rest of the round to get his skip on up there. He's going to have a pretty easy birdie attempt. Step out to try to match. And here's that stand up just yep. a little bit too much that I was talking about. He's pushed up long. That's going to be pretty much an approach shot. Just a little jump putt. Yep. Chris going more of that flex play over stable control driver. Yeah, and if this has the distance, this is looking good as well. Yeah, I like that flex play. You know, it really does give it that straight carry, but then it doesn't get too big of a skip to where, you know, the disc is starting to slow down, so you're guaranteed to maybe push a little bit more forwards instead of that sharp left and leave yourself with an awkward putt. So that's, that's a great change of not going to the full driver but being able to shape it a little differently as Garrett definitely being able to throw a straight hyzer here. Yeah, there's that straight hyzer. Gets a good roll around. He is uh, right around circle's edge. He'll have that tailwind putt. And just a little jump up from Seppo there. Kind of all he, all you can do in a smart way anyway. Yeah. And great putt from Garrett. Able to connect from right around Circle's Edge just inside. Yeah, and Garrett's the one, you know, once he gets that putter going, his drives are always, you know, always on. It feels like any any disc, any mold, it's 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 going to be close as Chris hits another great putt as well. But, you know, when that putter gets going for a player like Girthy, I mean, it's it's just ridiculous. I mean, he just continues on and on. So to see him get hot with that putter early on in this tournament, it, it's going to be an exciting one to watch. Yeah, and this card is heating up, tightening up. We've got two players at seven under. Chris at eight and Albert catching back up at six under now. Oh, no way! No the crowd was so spectacular today. Just the energy from you all was just amazing. As we move into hole 15, 269 feet, a new pin position. This actually was a par four last year. It's been shortened by 200 feet. Um, now gonna be, we have trimmed up these trees to make a pretty picturesque hole through this little tunnel. Um, most common play is gonna be either a mid range or maybe a putter straight through the gap. Also the forehand or for the lefty like yourself kind of sets up nicely to kind of filter through as Albert goes to that turnover. Just a yeah. little bit too much though, but he does slide up and on that right side, actually, to be inside circle. Uh, compared to the hole last year, fantastic yeah. change. Uh, the one last year, just four card back up. No, no real rhyme or reason, it didn't seem like. But this is a great par three. Um, and Chris actually going full turnover there. You know, a, a, a shot to kind of avoid the gap. Those trees are some of the most grabby trees um, that there feels like there are on the course. 
Yeah, I was going to say it's a great part three because of the gap that it kind of provides you. Mm-hmm. It is very picturesque. You can, you know, it, since it is so short. Come on, Garrett. Garrett goes, oh my gosh, wow. almost an ace run from Garrett Gerthy. And uh, just coming in hot there, trying to get that ace run. He kinda, throws that color glow rock three so well. He's been doing that for a, quite a long time. And on this form check here, you can see just the controlled release. Look at the wrist snap, but yeah. he doesn't let it open up. That's the that's the distance control right there. Yeah, it's so unique. His Seppo goes to a standstill here, playing that turnover. Not quite enough turn. Does get a little bit of a skip there, but didn't make it through the tunnel, it's having pretty, to go to a knee now. Yeah, that's a low ceiling putt from up there. Yeah, really awkward lie. But makeable if, um, you know, that downhill can yep. help the disc kind of drift up. Oh, and that is incredible from Seppo Paiu just having a day with the putter. Let's go to the gatekeeper rewind here, catching a little bit of foliage, keeping the nose up the entire way, and that is a highlight putt, picturesque. That had it all there. Yeah, he's got so much pop and so much spin with just using his arm. We saw it earlier in the round when he was standing up. Now he's on a knee and shows he's got the same thing. Just incredible. Yeah, true Frisbee player, you know doing that and as Garrett went long almost acing it but just comes up a little bit short Chris being pin high here just inside the circle count it that's three in a row there for Dickerson You can see there, Chris really setting the pace. You know, this this card went out at an earlier time, but I mean, already you know, tied for first, really setting the pace for the rest of the field. And today, I mean, really is you can't really have better scoring conditions here in Vegas. I mean, you come to a place like Vegas, you're expecting wind. We even had snow at this tournament. <laughs> yeah, that was my past. first year here. <laughs> and Albert keeping up with a turkey of his own,s getting to seven under. Yeah, now that putter's gotten hot. I mean. Albert, you know, similar player to, to Garrett when, you know, going to be putting himself in a good position with so many tools off the tee. And when that putter can actually get going, it, it feels unstoppable. I mean, Albert, a four-time Estonia champion. I mean, yeah. no, no stranger to winning. So a few birdies there. Uh, brings us to hole 16, 533-foot par three. Um, get your par there's a few there's a few players <laughs> there's a few players who are going to try to push this and get up there to get the two uh but pretty you know there's too much danger you've got a, a bunker about 415 420 feet on the right side once you get to about 480 there's an entire green mm -hmm. and uh, if you don't skip off of that you'll be ob yeah, players on this card definitely have the power to do it, but the wind was doing some some interesting things here as you see this fade out a lot earlier than oh no. I would expect. It does get a forward roll. Is that the green? I think yeah. it is the green. Yeah, I do believe he's out wow. of bounds there. And it just uh, he was obviously expecting it to lift up a little more and you know, Chris is going to let it go up here as well, but it's it was almost feeling like a headwind off the tee, and then all of a sudden, once you hit about right here, it felt like there was this tailwind kind of coming through once you made this corner, and a, a lot of other players were kind of kind of confused, and there was hard to get a wind read of what was actually going on in that kind of last third of the flight. Yeah, I'm surprised to see as much uh, power as I'm seeing on these shots with um, with how much trouble is up on that green, and Seppo gets a big push off to the left. Yeah, I think just, he's going to be He was be expecting OB. that headwind, I feel like, and it just never you know, faded. He did find the out-of-bounds there. It's a pretty big area, but it is did go up beyond that car path. And I'm just surprised to see all this aggressive play. There's not Garrett, however. Straightening out a little bit too much, but going to be pin high. Wow. See, unless you know you're going to be able to push past that green, that's why I was surprised yeah. that so many people were as aggressive as you are. You can throw a 380-foot hyzer and have a very easy approach to get your par on this hole. Yeah, that's a good approach there from Dickerson. You have a little bit of a comebacker uphill, but nothing too much. And you can see after Seppo going out of bounds there, a lot of stuff in the way, but he does put it quite close. Going to be the first bogey, I believe, on our whole card. Yeah, and it looks like we're going to have two. 
Mm -hmm. He did find the, the green there. Yeah, but using the ground play, where you, you see that a lot in this course with how many baskets are raised up on these kind of just awkward hills where you want to run it. Ooh, and <laughs> thankfully, that doesn't hit and roll back onto the green. Yeah, uh, but just... using that ground play to kind of hit the bottom of it, slide up, and uh, it, it's something you don't really get to do much unless you are on this kind of ball golf style course. Right. It seems like most of the of the ball golf style courses do have those mounds that the baskets get put on, and uh, you really have to play to the ground rather than to the basket. And like you said, this hole was the most difficult hole of the day, coming in at a 3.41 average. And I mean, being last year, it was, you know, even a little bit further, but it, with that green so close, like you said, and then so many things can go wrong, but being the hardest hole on the course. A couple of bogeys, a couple of pars, it's pretty, pretty normal here on 16. As we move into hole 17, 345 foot par three. This one, our blind off the tee, the play here is gonna be a backhand hyzer. I'm just trying to put it high, but this is one of the most difficult greens and this basket is actually raised up, hanging in the tree with the chain below to keep it nice and still and taut. And a lot of different plays here as we see Chris actually picking up a mid range. Yeah, 345 feet, but seems to play a little shorter, it seems like to me. And that's absolutely perfect from Dickerson. That is where you want it at. You saw the basket way up there. And again, even though it is elevated, it is above a mound. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another <laughs> so, mound. And the OB comes in so fast on that backside if you do try to run it. It's Garrett going with a fairway driver here. Yeah, this looks sawed off a little bit short. He's just going to be trying to pitch up to get a par. Yeah, when you're standing on that tee, I mean, it, it's truly blind. You cannot see really where you're going at all. And then knowing the out-of-bounds comes in. So the, sawing it off a little bit early is, is not a bad thing. A more direct line here from yeah, Albert. Yeah, this is looking early too, though. Uh, just you really need to pull it. this out wide and let it come back in unless you're throwing a mid-range. Something that's not going to have such a severe angle, angle on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is one that, you know, a lot of our holes so far, you've seen players go more of a skip play. But this one, you really don't want to skip because of how quick this green is and how close the out-of-bounds is. If you do, you know, even get inside the circle, the roll away is possible. But this looks great from Seppo. Yep. Maybe just inside the circle. Still pretty, pretty nervy putt as it's so yeah. That's high the above. that's the scary spot to be at. He's yeah. putting straight towards the OB there and doesn't have much of a backstop. This is, needs to sit down. Yep, feels like that basket is actually the perfect height. Where if you put a disc with speed and the trajectory is just a little bit off, it has the exact distance on the backside to find the out of bounds. As Garrett taps the chain, exclaiming he did hit chains on on his up <laughs> shot there. All right, and a great bounce back there from Seppo. Getting the birdie after the bogey. Able to connect on the scary putt. You can see these low branches can come into play a little bit. And you see how close Albert is right there. His his upshot landed before the basket and still slid on past, mm -hmm. and he was almost able to take relief from that OB. Yeah, we finally get to Dickerson's phenomenal drive. You know, to hold down the stretch and being able to, to walk up and throw a mid-range confidently. I mean, that's, that's saying your round's feeling really good. And it is. I mean, now taking the solo lead here at minus 10. Yeah, got to the double digits with one hole left. Hole 18, 301 feet. You've got a short water carry here. And you have to decide whether you want to go straight or to the left of those trees that we're passing on the left side right now. The, the spotters and the Las Vegas challenge group here graciously showing us where the basket is, but also make sure you don't skip too far right or else you will be in bushes and not able to putt. Yeah, this hole actually does play as an island if you wanted to lay up on the... Oh, and almost putting it in there, Stickerson. If you wanted to play on that right side and not go across the water, you can, um, but most of your players, if not all, are really going to go straight across. And this is an pretty different line to go this high above with such an overstable disc almost coming down perpendicular 
Wow, and he was, that's an incredible shot. That wasn't that's, even a skip, that was a bounce with that disc kind of doubling over itself, hitting yeah. perpendicular and going to be finishing out the round with a tap in, taking Seppo to minus nine. Uh, but that angle is needed, really, if you're going off to this right side. And even higher from Girthy. Going to come up a little bit short, though, catching that last little shrub, but should be in a good position. Yeah, it looks like he stayed clean. He should have an open putt there. And Albert going to the forehand here. This is the more intentional play. Yeah, it's a little more of the direct, like you said, in intentional being a, a loose or word. Or intended, <laughs> I should say. <laughs> when yes. you have Garrett Gerthy and Seppo Paiu <laughs> on the card, I mean, it's, yeah. it's definitely, here's the intended way and here's the, the fun way. One of the cleanest forehands. Yeah, this looks is super so clean. Good. Pushing a little fast, but does sit down pretty nicely. He'll be yeah, inside the circle. This is that kind of softer sand. We've talked about it a lot. Just sometimes you get a skip, sometimes you don't. And thankfully, this one is more of that kind of compact. And Garrett makes easy work there for the birdie. And it's looking like we're pretty set up pretty well for a star frame to finish the first round of the year here. There it is. Great putt there from Albert. Really was able to heat up here on the back nine. And just the, the one bogey and two bogeys for the entire card, which is just lights out, you know, first round of the year. Sometimes there's some nerves, but it's gosh, Chris takes us to minus 11. Yeah, and like we were talking about earlier, this is one of the earlier cards of the day, so they are setting the pace. Yeah. And we check in on the round one results. Chris Dickerson, double digits and a little bit more. And all of our card not far behind. Seppo Paiu, along with so many players at that minus nine, as we're going to check in with the leaderboard here. I believe there's eight or nine players tied at minus nine. And it is tied at the top as we head in to round two. Eagle McMahon and an amazing showing from the young 16-year-old Gannon Burr. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, going into the end of a course tomorrow, we're going to see a lot more separation, I feel like. Uh, a bit of a longer layout and uh, definitely going to be exciting to watch. Yeah, I'm really excited to do it alongside you. Be sure to like and subscribe here at Gatekeeper Media and we will be attacking the end of a course tomorrow. My name is Mitch Phillips. Joining me is Nathan Queen and we'll see you for round two here at the Las Vegas Challenge. We'll see you guys out there.